Most of you would have probably noticed, or at least heard, that many Jewish people tend to be doing pretty well for themselves financially. It's like, whenever you check out those lists of the world's wealthiest individuals, you're bound to find Jewish names popping up left, right, and center. And it's not just your imagination running wild. On average, Jewish households in America seem to be bringing in more dough than other groups. Now, considering that Jewish people make up less than 1% of the global population, it's pretty mind-blowing that about 25% of the world's billionaires are Jewish. On top of that, according to a study by Pew Research, Jewish have climbed to the top of the financial ladder in American society, being the richest religious group. They represent a mere 2% of the U.S. population, yet hold a whopping 30% of the spots among the 400 wealthiest Americans. Now, if that's not playing the game of Monopoly in real life, I don't know what is. You might think, it's all about being in the right place at the right time, or maybe they just got lucky. But nope, that's not the case. This isn't about luck or a happy coincidence. The secret sauce? It's all about the wisdom tucked away in their holy books. Yep, you heard that right. <laughs> Financial strategies and principles have been passed down through generations right from the get-go. And these aren't just any old tips and tricks. We're talking about timeless, foolproof advice that covers everything from business dealings to social interactions and from money management to building wealth. And you know what? This Jewish wisdom can help you too to achieve financial freedom. In fact, anyone can apply these principles. So if you're aiming for a major financial makeover, you're in the right place. This video is all about to reveal those secrets of Jewish wisdom and explore how these principles are woven into the daily lives of Jewish people and how you, yes you, can apply them using a simple and practical blueprint. So subscribe to the channel and let's get started. Now to understand the Jewish wisdom, it's necessary that at first we clear a pretty big misunderstanding about Jewish culture and beliefs. Most people think that Jewish people are all about embracing righteousness to the point where they're okay with being poor because after all, money's just a material thing, right? Well, let me tell you, that's not even close to the whole story. Thinking that poverty is somehow linked to holiness is like saying you'd prefer to have the flu. No thank you, right? The truth is, in Jewish thought, being poor isn't seen as a badge of honor or a sign of being virtuous. It's more like unnecessary suffering that nobody should have to endure. Now, it's a bit ironic when you think about it. Despite the common image of humility and simplicity often associated with religious life, Jewish teachings are pretty clear on this. Poverty. It's not something to aim for. In fact, rabbis talk about it as something to be avoided at all costs. Kind of like how you'd steer clear of catching a cold. They don't see any value in suffering needlessly and believe that it's neither admirable nor desirable. That's how Jewish wisdom can help you achieve financial freedom by emphasizing the importance of steering clear of financial distress. And get this, because it's a crucial part of the puzzle, Jewish laws and traditions encourage everyone to do whatever it takes to be self-sufficient and not depend on others for a living. It's all about earning your keep, whether through a steady job or running your own business, depending on what makes sense for you. This approach to self-reliance is a huge reason why Jewish communities, despite facing numerous challenges and being dispersed across the globe, continue to thrive both in their businesses and personal finances. And also, let's not forget about the role of charity and philanthropy in all of this. Yes, the wealthy are encouraged to lend a helping hand, but here's the kicker. Those who receive help are never meant to see it as a free pass. They're still expected to pull their own weight and work towards financial independence. It's kind of ironic, isn't it? In a world where so many are drowning in debt, be it from credit cards, student loans, or mortgages, the age-old Jewish principle of working hard to earn a living and avoid being a burden holds a key to financial freedom. It's a reminder that perhaps the secret to overcoming financial struggles isn't so much about chasing wealth as it is about embracing wisdom. That's how Jewish wisdom can help you achieve financial freedom, by guiding you to live a life of self-reliance, responsibility, and meaningful contribution to society. So the big question on everyone's mind is, how do they do it? How have Jewish communities managed to not just survive, but thrive financially across generations? It's a question that brings us to confront some rather unpleasant and downright false stereotypes. You see, there's this 
age-old myth that Jews control the financial sector and, by extension, the global economy. This harmful stereotype has been around for ages, and it's not just a baseless rumor. It's been used to justify some of history's darkest moments, including the horrific actions of Hitler during the Holocaust. But let's set the record straight with a healthy dose of reality mixed with a bit of irony. The stereotypes that paint Jewish people as cheap or greedy couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, when it comes to handling money, many Jewish individuals, especially those who are deeply religious, turn to the Torah, the Old Testament Bible, for guidance. And what does the Torah teach? It's all about kindness, benevolence, and a deep love for one's community. These values are the real treasures that Jewish wisdom brings to the table in discussions about wealth and finance. That's how Jewish wisdom can help you achieve financial freedom, by rooting financial decisions and values of kindness and community. From a very young age, Jewish children are immersed in these teachings. There's a proverb that goes, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Proverbs 22.6 this isn't just about sitting kids down for a lesson once in a while. It's about a continuous practice, applying these lessons over and over again in everyday life. It's about nurturing independent thinkers who are self-reliant enough to make sound financial decisions. And here's where the irony kicks in. In a world where financial education often takes a backseat in childhood development, Jewish tradition places it front and center from the get-go. Let's talk about Hanukkah a time that shines a light on the Jewish approach to financial education. During Hanukkah, it's not just about lighting candles and spinning dreidels. It's also when Jewish families take the opportunity to teach their children about money. The tradition of giving children money during Hanukkah comes with a side of financial wisdom. The idea is to discuss what money is, what it's for, and how to manage it wisely. Children are taught to divide their money into three parts, one for charity, one for personal use on things they need, and one for savings. It's a practical way of passing on the principles of money management to the next generation, emphasizing the importance of generosity, responsible spending, and saving. So as we peel back the layers of misconceptions and stereotypes, what emerges is a picture of a community deeply rooted in values that not only promote financial stability, but also foster a sense of responsibility and generosity. It's a testament to the power of education, tradition, and community values in shaping financial habits and decisions. And in the grand scheme of things, it's a bit ironic how ancient wisdom continues to offer such relevant and practical guidance in our modern, often materialistically driven world. Continuing our insightful journey into how Jewish wisdom can profoundly impact financial freedom, let's delve into a beautifully simple yet incredibly effective method taught from a young age. The practice of using five jars. This method, believe it or not, can be a game changer in how we perceive and manage our finances. It's a bit like taking the piggy bank concept we all know and love, then turbocharging it with intention and purpose. So let's break it down. Imagine a child with just $10 to his name. Rather than spending it all at once or stashing it away in a single savings account, he's introduced to a method that's not only smart, but instills values for a lifetime. And here's how Jewish wisdom can help you achieve financial freedom, starting with something as simple as dividing $10 among five purposeful jars. First up, we have the tithe jar. Following the biblical instruction of giving back 10% of any earnings to God, the child places $1 in this jar. This act is fundamental in teaching not to be greedy and to recognize the importance of giving back. The irony here? In a world that often encourages accumulating wealth for personal gain, this first step underscores a profound lesson in humility and gratitude. Next, we move on to the charity jar where another 10%, $1, is allocated. This step reinforces the belief that living a fulfilling life is tied to giving wholeheartedly and supporting the community. But the twist doesn't end there. The underlying belief is that generosity breeds trust within the community. It's a beautiful cycle. The more you give, the more you're likely to receive support in your own ventures. Imagine grasping such a powerful principle of mutual support and generosity at a young age. It's a stark contrast to the often cutthroat business world 
highlighting how kindness and community can indeed pave the way to success. The third jar is for investments, where 20% $2 of the money is designated. This isn't about saving, it's about growing wealth. Even if $2 seems like a small amount, it's the concept that counts. Children are encouraged to invest in something that promises returns, like a small lemonade stand. What's particularly striking about this approach is the autonomy it gives. Mistakes? They're part of the learning process. This jar teaches about risk, reward, and the importance of making informed decisions. But it's not just about the jars. It's about the broader lessons they represent. Through this simple method, children learn the balance of giving, saving, investing, and spending. They're lessons in financial literacy, sure, but they're also lessons in life. That's how Jewish wisdom can help you achieve financial freedom, by instilling a sense of responsibility, generosity, and foresight into every financial decision. And just when you think that's all there is, remember, this is but one facet of a multifaceted approach to financial education and personal development. The depth of these teachings, rooted in centuries of wisdom, highlights an understanding of wealth not just as a means to an end, but as a tool for building a better self and a better world. It's a refreshing take in a materialistically driven society, offering a blueprint for not just financial success, but for a life well lived. Through these practices, Jewish wisdom lays down a foundation that ensures when children grow up, Managing finances and making sound decisions becomes second nature, making the journey towards financial freedom not just a possibility, but a well-paved path. I hope this video is useful for you. If you want more videos like this, please comment on the word video, so I know. Moving on, here is another fascinating aspect of how Jewish tradition approaches money. It's like uncovering a secret recipe that's been passed down through generations, one that's surprisingly simple yet profoundly impactful. And let me tell you, there's a refreshing dose of irony when you compare these time-tested practices with today's often reckless spending habits. That's how Jewish wisdom can help you achieve financial freedom, by offering a perspective on money that's as grounded as it is enlightening. You see, Jewish communities have a unique way of looking at finances that really sets them apart. Instead of living beyond their means and splurging on the latest gadgets or fashion trends, they prioritize spending on things that truly matter, supporting their community, family, and investing in personal growth through education and skill development. Just pause for a moment and think about your relationship with money. Are you careful with your spending or do you find yourself often swayed by impulse buys? Do you invest in things that add real value to your life? Or is it all about keeping up appearances? Now, it might be tempting to dismiss this cautious approach to finances as mere frugality or even stinginess, but there's a deeper wisdom at play here. Jewish tradition understands that money, while necessary, is not eternal and is always at risk of diminishing. It's a nuanced view that recognizes the importance of both earning money and saving it diligently to secure and grow wealth over time. This dual focus on aggressive saving and prudent spending is crucial for anyone looking to improve their financial situation. It's about working hard to increase your income and being smart about keeping expenses in check to ensure that your wealth continues to grow. Here's where things get really interesting. Think about how much you know about your monthly expenses. Do you have strategies in place for saving and investing? What's your lifestyle like? Are you living modestly or teetering on the edge of extravagance? And let's not overlook the power of your social circle. It might surprise you, but in Jewish communities, socializing and forging strong bonds are seen as essential components of personal success and happiness. Remember how we talked about the charity jar and the emphasis on community support? It illustrates a profound truth about the Jewish approach to financial prosperity. It's deeply intertwined with social connectivity. Unlike in many other communities where people often exist in isolation, Jewish communities thrive on mutual support, sharing opportunities, and ensuring wealth circulates within the group. It's a testament to the belief that your network can significantly influence your financial trajectory. In fact, there is a saying that goes, if you want to get rich, learn from the rich. This isn't about mere emulation, 
but understanding and absorbing the habits, strategies, and mindsets of those who have successfully navigated the path to wealth. It's not just about dreaming big, but taking actionable steps to make those dreams a reality. Learning from those who've already made it involves understanding their journey, the decisions they made, the strategies they employed, and the networks they built. This is where the beauty of mentorship shines through. Being mentored not only provides you with rich knowledge and insights, but also grants you access to a broader network, recommendations, and a trust that can open doors previously unimaginable. It's an incredible leverage point that can accelerate your journey towards financial freedom. Now you might wonder, how does all of this tie back to Jewish wisdom? Well, it's fascinating how much of this knowledge can be traced back to teachings from the Torah. It's not just a religious text, but a repository of wisdom on how to live a life that's financially sound and morally upright. The principles of making, saving, investing, and spending money wisely are not hidden in complex financial jargon, but are laid out in clear, actionable teachings that have stood the test of time. What's truly remarkable, and a bit ironic, is that in an era where instant gratification seems to be the norm, these ancient teachings advocate for a disciplined, long-term approach to financial well-being. That's how Jewish wisdom can help you achieve financial freedom. It's about adopting a mindset that values not just the accumulation of wealth, but the thoughtful management of it. It encourages a lifestyle that balances personal enjoyment with community involvement, hard work with smart planning, and financial independence with mutual support. This approach to money, with its emphasis on living within one's means, saving diligently, investing wisely, and giving generously, offers a stark contrast to the often short-sighted financial decisions we see around us. It teaches us that real wealth isn't just about the balance in our bank accounts, but about how we use our resources to enrich our lives and those of the people around us. In essence, Jewish financial wisdom is not exclusive to those of the Jewish faith. Its principles are universal, offering valuable lessons for anyone interested in not just creating wealth, but sustaining it through generations. It's a holistic approach that sees financial freedom not as an end goal, but as a journey that encompasses personal growth, community strength, and a deep understanding of the true value of money. So take these lessons to heart. Whether it's through the disciplined use of the five jars, the strategic cultivation of our social circles, or the pursuit of mentorship, there's so much we can learn from Jewish traditions about building a financially secure and fulfilling life. It's about more than just money. It's about crafting a legacy of wisdom, generosity, and success that can guide us and future generations toward true financial freedom. All right, now let's shift gears a bit and talk about something that might hit close to home for a lot of us. Now, this is where things get a tad ironic, especially in today's hustle culture. You know, there's this widespread belief that just putting in more hours at work or hustling harder is the golden ticket to financial freedom. But here's a twist and a breath of fresh air from Jewish wisdom. Working smart trumps working hard every single time. That's how Jewish wisdom can help you achieve financial freedom, by encouraging us to think differently about how we approach our work and businesses. Imagine you're running a shop and you're doing okay, making a decent profit. The common knee-jerk reaction to wanting more success is to work longer hours, right? But does that really translate to more customers or, better yet, opening new branches? If the answer is no, then why the back-breaking effort? This is where the irony kicks in. Sometimes we're so busy running in the hamster wheel that we miss the bigger picture. Jewish tradition teaches us to pause, reassess, and learn from those who've already figured out the next steps. It's about working smarter, not harder. This approach doesn't just apply to businesses, but to every aspect of our work lives. Now let's talk about business ethics, a realm where Jewish traditions really shine. Traditional Jewish business practices are steeped in honesty and respect. This stems from a strong emphasis in the Torah on surrounding oneself with upright individuals and steering clear of deceitful practices. What's fascinating, and somewhat ironic in a world where cutting corners is often glorified, is that this integrity is exactly what keeps customers returning. It's a testament to the fact that, in the long run, being trustworthy and treating people with respect pays off in more ways than one. 
Now this might touch a nerve, but it's a crucial point worth considering. Are you harboring any regrets for not embarking on these financial paths earlier? Thinking perhaps it's too late to embrace these principles now? Here's a piece of advice that might change your perspective. It's never too late to start. You don't have to have been raised with these secrets to benefit from them. Learning, adapting, and applying these teachings is possible at any stage of life, and the transformative impact they can have on your financial well-being and overall happiness is profound. This is how Jewish wisdom can pave the way to financial freedom, by assuring you that opportunities for growth and success are always within reach, no matter where you find yourself in life's journey. The best route is to take this opportunity and start small. Venturing into the unknown might seem daunting, but the rewards can be truly remarkable. For those of you with children, now is an ideal time to begin imparting these invaluable lessons. It could very well be the most significant investment you make in their future. To sum up the whole discussion, this advice might unsettle some, but it's worth serious consideration. You have the choice to either ignore these time-honored insights and stick with your current routine or to take a bold step towards change. The enduring success and resilience of Jewish communities are not mere coincidences or the result of fortuitous events. They are the culmination of generations diligently living by these principles, which combine hard work with intelligent planning ethical conduct with innovative thinking, and communal support with personal responsibility. This embodies the core of Jewish wisdom, a holistic guide not only to achieving financial independence, but also to leading a life enriched with values, satisfaction, and a sense of belonging. So let's remain open to the teachings that have the potential to not only enhance our financial status, but also enrich our lives in ways we never imagined. You can enjoy any audiobook for free by clicking on the link below the video. You can also find a list of suggested books and where to buy them below. The purpose of this video is to educate you on various aspects of investing and not to give you any specific investment advice. Investing involves risks and uncertainties, and you should always do your own research and consult with qualified professionals before making any financial decisions. However, past performance does not guarantee future results, and you should always consider the risk of investments before putting your money at stake. If you find this video helpful, I recommend you watch my next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, feel free to leave your comment below. I appreciate your support, and I hope to see you in my next video.